Uh, I just started it. Thank you. Yep. Yep. <laughs> All right, now the floor is yours. Okay, so I'm, let's see how this goes. <clears throat> so I am the Cloud Native Architect for Resource Management, not for all of Intel. Um, I'm not even sure what my org is currently because we just reorged, but um, Sasha is my counterpart in SATG. Um, so just to make sure we're all talking about the same subject, when you're talking about resource management, there's two parts. And I, I know most of you probably already know this, but I run through it anyways, just to make sure we're all on the same page as far as what we're discussing. So there's two parts of resource management and clusters. There's scheduling on the clusters where, where you schedule your workload matters. And so if you don't want to be scheduling your simple workloads to your high performance AI specific mach you know, machines with GPUs on them, and you don't want to be scheduling your high performance workloads to underpowered cores, right? The other, so here's the general picture, um, which is basically, this is just a spread of, of a heterogeneous system and maybe what you might want scheduled on there, right? So currently with, we'll go through this with the Kubelet resource plugin, but currently um, you ask for a certain number of cores and it does its best in scheduling. So Kubernetes is not great at ha handling heterogeneous clusters at this time, right? Um, the second part is once you get to the node, what, what do you do with your resources? So how do you schedule your resources? Determines both the performance of your workload and how long it runs. And this is also getting added attention with the sustainability forums that are starting up. And they're all over the place. There's one within CNCF. Ideally, you want to power down all the resources not currently being consumed from a sustainability standpoint. And you, at the same time, you still want optimal responsiveness and getting the resources aligned when it's time to use them. Um, this is just a generic example. Um, I know it's NUMA specific, but this, you can do this with any sort of resource changing. Um, so if you have your memory, your CPU, and your XPU in different zones, you have the UPI bus toll. I call this the toll. You know, there's a toll living in the under the bridge and the UPI bus stealing all your time. Ideally, you want these lined. This gives you more uh, responsiveness. It's faster. Doesn't run as long. Doesn't take as much energy. So my team has a few different projects. We have telemetry aware scheduling um, over in SATG, which I'll also run over as GPU aware scheduling, which is part of that. There's power management, and then there's the kubelet piece that we would like to get done. So that is a really big piece that I would like uh, to understand community needs for. Um, so telemetry aware scheduling, why? We want to avoid scheduling on unhealthy nodes. We want to migrate pods away from unhealthy nodes. When scheduling, we want to consider node properties such as temperature, current load, power, and other. And we want to give support to external components like the Kubernetes descheduler and GPU or schedulers. Um, I think I did the slide. Yeah. So telemetry aware scheduler is currently an extender. Um, so we take it telemetry data to aid scheduling and descheduling decisions in Kubernetes. We use policies to enable rule-based decisions on pod placement. And these are powered by metrics collected from the nodes. You can use Prometheus. You can also use other uh, metrics collectors. It knows how to interpret filtering and scoring and utilize node affinity rules and the policies support multi-metric rules. So this is, this is new this year. So we can take any of and all of, so you can combine metrics. So this is the general layout of how this works. There's Prometheus, there's a Prometheus adapter, there's custom metrics API. Basically, if it goes into the custom metrics API, we can pull it. Then there's tele telemetry where scheduling, scheduler working, scheduling working with the scheduler. Um, and then there's, you can have TAS policies. So we're gonna go through these one by one. And um, there's don't schedule. So a pod with this strategy would will not be scheduled on a node breaking these metric rules, right? So if it's with the metric name, if it's equal to one, then don't schedule there. And then this is, if it is scheduled here, um, it prioritizes nodes based on a, a comparator and an up-to-date metric value. So if the temperature is low in this case, you schedule there. Deschedule, so if a pod with this policy is running on a node and it that it violates can be descheduled with the Kubernetes descheduler. So basically if your temperature is too high or your amount of RAM is less than some amount, then it will deschedule. 
And uh, we also allow labeling. This is less in the scheduling, but maybe based on your particular scheduler. So there's, so in this case, we basically make labels based on these rules. So you have card zero equals true and card one equals true. And this is used partially with GPU aware scheduling. Um, so we can, this is just info on this. Um, we can, you can submit PRs for changes. This is open source. Um, we do have future work for TAS before I want to release this and try to put it into the community, which is specifically to move from an extender because we're currently a Kubernetes extender to the Kubernetes plugin, which plays a little bit better with the current scheduling uh, decisions. So we're, we're currently in that work. But once that's done, we do plan to try to push upstream to the community. And these are more links. Um, I'll, I can send this after, but there's white papers on this. Um, we have a power specific example. And then there is a recent KubeCon talk and demo done by uh, Denisio and Madalena on my team. Do you have any questions on this before I move to GPU aware scheduling? Uh, none for me. Okay. So the caveat to this is there's GPU or scheduling. Um, so this is the case, I'll go over the use case. The node has two GPUs and each has, you know, a certain amount of memory and you want to make a replica set to three and each of these needs five gigabytes of memory. You end up with those nodes being split or one, one of those pods being split, because you can put one in each, but then you still have three and three. So this is basically keeping you from scheduling across, uh, across GPUs, but there's other ways to do this. There are other, other pieces of this, but the, but with this, we, we are using the Intel i915. So that was, that's a G, uh, Intel specific GPU. And we can choose a number of millicores here and we can choose an amount of memory per each and choose how many. So this tells you how many uh, GPUs you want and then what the spread of the memory is for the particular one. So this is cases where you want to divide up a current, uh, a current GPU into slices and then schedule it across many pods or you, know, you, you want some sort of specific number of GPUs on your, on your pod. So this is that particular project. Um, there's NFD with GPU plugin because you really do need NFD to do the node feature discovery so you know what's running. Are there any questions on that one? Okay. I think one, one question that I had was uh, on the GPU. So this, this is for any kind of GPU or yeah, as long as you can, you can schedule multiple things to it. So how you do the underlying piece is the device plugins is your own piece, but this will help you do the scheduling. Okay, so the, basically the device plugin would take care of making sure the drivers are up in the node and then this takes mm -hmm. care of the pod scheduling and they can share it Correct. with you. Okay. Right, this is the scheduling half. So like earlier we had the scheduling half and the resource management half, this is the scheduling half. So to be to be a bit more specific, where device plugin needs to be specifically crafted to utilize those functionality. So our our team who who is uh, doing the support for GPU is involved in in this scheduling part as well. So it's two two sides of the same piece. But I, I guess the question I asked was if I would be using an NVIDIA GPU, for example, with uh, NVIDIA operator orchestrating the driver setup. Uh, then they need a driver to handle it. Yeah. Okay. And, and the NVIDIA plugin needs to be adjusted to utilize the same concepts. All right. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. So, yeah, this is scheduling only. Um, and then we have the last project that's Intel specific. Well, GPU aware scheduling and telemetry aware scheduling aren't Intel specific, but we are using them for Intel. Um, is a power manager, which it provides limited control over the pot. So Kubernetes currently, you don't have really any power over the configuration of CPUs assigned to the pod. Um, 
So if you want to lower the seat frequencies or raise the frequencies, and you do want that all the time with performance or sustainability environments, you can't do that. And so we've des the Intel Kubernetes Power Manager uh, is designed to expose and utilize the Intel specific power management technologies. So currently um, we have granular control over the configuration of cores. We can change the frequency of all the cores in a shared pool. We can lower power consumption by controlling the frequencies of the shared pool cores. And then these are the particular features we have. These are SSTBF, SSTCP, and then frequency tuning. And currently, so I'll advise everyone to wait about a month, maybe less, until we release the new version of Power Manager. But we're changing from using the library we were using, which was a Python library, to a Golang library that we've also built, which is supporting, it, it's easier to deploy. And also we have uh, better, it's faster for us to get in functionality and it's open source. So I, those are also shared uh, here. So I can share those links also. And we also have a white paper on how to use these. It's, I don't know, we like it. It's currently, um, and it'll, it'll remain an operator in the future. I'd like us to add a gRPC interface to it so you can control cores from outside the power lab, the power manager through the power manager, basically so that it doesn't have to be through the pods. But if you have something monitoring things on your system where you want cores spun up or down, you can do that. And you don't have different power managers and governors fighting for control of the cores. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. And I'm happy to work with anyone who wants to work with this. I, I am requesting we get the police out the door, but we it's already to go. And then this last piece, which um, extra, this is a community project more than an Intel project, um, is that we have the, the current state of the Kubelet is we have some restrictions that we can't handle today. So you can't mix pins with shared cores. You can't choose which NUMA zone spreads. So Topology Manager does a compact uh, packing in NUMA zones. Different can't choose. Uh, so if you have something where you have different types of frequencies within a core, you can't choose them according to frequency. The cores are allocated by container, not by pod. I can't assign them to a pod and then let the pod move from I can't handle affinity of anything below node level. We're <clears throat> cold, so doesn't support CPU or memory less nodes, and there's still a max eight NUMA zone limitation, which as you start looking at the tiling, uh, that a lot of uh, cores are doing it these days, plus the fact that there's multiple sockets, that's a pretty big lim limitation at this point. And part of the challenge to this is Kubelet has a set of resource managers that have to be addressed every time we add a new feature to the Kubelet. So the current solutions, including CRM and CPU pooler, they work by turning off the Kubelet functionality entirely, which can have unintended consequences, assuming something's working. So, and we still cannot schedule cores by pods or across specific NUMA zones or affinities. We want it out of this model. So I was speaking with Derek Carr and his suggestion was to split the Kubelet into a data plane and make the control plane a pluggable So working from that, uh, we would like to, to do this work so we, so we can release resource managers custom to our hardware to handle our specific use cases, including plugging into solutions we've developed, such as the CPU manager control plane. Uh, it's wrong. This is the CPU puller. Or CRM, while still being native to the ecosystem. And if you want info on CRM, Sasha's here, so he can give he probably has a presentation in his back pocket he can go through. Um, future work is we want to finish getting this RFC through the and developed, create a cap, and start work and get the Kubelet remodeled following the specifications, in, which is, I have links to. And we want to plug our resource managers into the new model, which will be more native. You know, historically, Kubernetes has kept things in pluggable interfaces, so CNI, CSI, 
device plugins. But we haven't done that in, with our CPUs and memory and our, for, your, for our devices. And if, we're, if we have time, we're at the half hour, we can go off over the RFC for the um, CPU landscape exploration doc where we went through all of the different uh, issues and then customer customer requests, et cetera, and we put them all in this document so that we knew what we were missing. So that list that we have up there mostly comes from customers or from those issues we added. Do we want to go through that RFC? Do we want to talk about CRRM? I don't, I'm putting you on the spot, Sasha. Sorry about that. No problem with that. Uh, I'm, from my point of view, I'm happy to for you to continue a little if, you, if you'd like. We've got time. Okay, we can go through the RFC. Sasha, at the, do you want to at the end go through CRM or do you want to do that first? Uh, up to you. I'm, I'm fine with any. Okay, let's go through the RFC. It's fairly short. Let me pull that up. And share that. Okay, I have to find which window I was on. Okay, let me share. You have to stop sharing and then reshare. Okay. Okay, so we'll go through this. Um, so at the beginning, this basically goes through the fact that Kubernetes was initially written with this simple model of node resources and how they would be configured. This has worked well for generic. Um, but now we have a wider range of use cases, which is why a lot of you are in this group is you have your own specialty use cases for HPC or AI or you know any other specialty case. Uh, telco has worse cases as well. So we've, we wish to move to a Kubelet resource plugin model similar to how specialty resources are handled as we have within the device plugin model. And um, currently, here's what, what the Kubelet looks at like currently. So you have the Kubelet, you have the topology manager, and then you have the hint providers. The hint providers are your CPU manager, your device manager, and your memory manager. And everything has to go through the topology manager to go through. So anytime you make changes, you have to make sure all of these places work correctly. So this, <clears throat> the exploration doc is, is listed here. Um, there are some, there is some commentary on here. I would like more commentary just to make sure when we start the cup, we know what we're doing as far as who's working on what. So we make sure we're handling everything. The cases I have in there are already in there. So. Um, you can't take, oh, the other one is you can't take advantage of non-uniform L3 cache access configured for CPU cores. So we have Intel RDT, but there are others. Um, so that was not listed in another one. I should probably add it to that. So solutions to any one of the of these challenges require a related solution to optimize memory. So if we if we change where the cores are, now we have to check the memory. So if you touch the CPU manager, you'll now have to check the test touch the memory manager and you still have to touch the topology manager, right? No matter what you do. So our design proposal is to make a pluggable resource hub, basically, instead of retrofitting functionality to the existing model continually, right? And basically to pull all the resource managers that are currently in there, topology manager, CPU manager, device manager, and memory manager out into a plugin and then work backwards from there. 
Um, we're still going to need to uh, also handle the runtimes. So there needs whatever plugin we do has to be both because uh, because we do want to roll those managers out probably into a gRPC piece. We still also want to make sure that rent you can also route them through the runtimes because there's projects that route the including CRM that route the resources through the runtimes. So this particular one um, will go through the goals. We want to be able to plug res resource managers into Kubelet to allow customizer of resource requirements. We want to be able to export resources to expose them to the scheduler. So that piece may be more complicated because now we have added annotations, right? We want to make it simple to expand resources to those currently not envisioned. So when you're talking about memory and memory less nodes or CPU less nodes, there's other components there, right? Um, you want to make it simple to expose attributes about resources. Non-goals, we don't want to break any existing use cases. So whatever solution we add, there should be full support of default behavior. Um, and we don't want to change default behavior. We don't want to create any more latency than there is today for scheduling. And that's that may be something we do in the future or have to look at after we get this done, is there is still quite a bit of latency in scheduling. We want to be able to support current spot specs. There may be additional extensibility, but we, we still need to support the current pod specs. And the plugins should not be writing to the API themselves. So there needs to be some sort of interface. So the next step is basically to start the cap, but we're still looking for feedback here as to what goals and non-goals are to make sure we have everything encapsulated. Thoughts? No, I mean, it's very, very good, very detailed. On the RFC side of things, is this something you've had to do before or is this the first time you've done this? Um, this is the first time I've done this. Sasha's done this before, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. um, I had some questions actually almost right back at the beginning. Um, when you're writing a, a custom schedule like this, how, how do you go about testing it? So that's part of the the questions. So, um, so to start, we're going to be using the default managers, right? So whatever, whatever functionality and testing that they used when they put in those with the initial caps is a testing that we'll pull out to make sure it works now. So all of all of the the current ways that we already validated the topology manager, memory manager, CPU manager. All of that needs to work through the plugin model, because if it doesn't work through the plugin model, we're missing something, right? Um, we do have some resources to work on this, but we would like community help, prop, you know. Does that answer your question? Yeah. As far as testing, yeah. Basically, we're 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 looking currently at pulling out all of the the current caps that were already put in for uh, CPU manager and device manager, all of all of the managers and just pulling them out and then looking at those particular tests. And if someone wants to test a custom resource manager, you're right, we probably need a test harness. So that's a good, good point to have there. So should I add that to the goals? Yeah, yeah. Can't hurt. Are we into general questions now, or have you got anything else you want to cover? I I think I'm done. Sasha, do you want to go through CIRM, or do you want to just go into questions? Well, I can say a few words, because uh, there are a few additional things besides, besides with CPU management uh, activities. Uh, if, if you can stop share, so I can reuse. Floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, Do you see it? Oh. 
Okay, now we should be able to see it, right? Yeah, looks good. All right, so I'm going just to reuse a couple of slides uh, from our presentation with me and uh, one of our team members uh, from my team and auntie we did on HPC and watch working day uh, in, uh, in last KubeCon. So uh, Marlo already mentioned about our project here I am. The history of that project is such what uh, we tried to create with Kubelet uh, resource plugins about three or four years ago. And at that time, uh, community was not ready to. Uh, now it looks like uh, community a bit more receptive. But meanwhile, uh, to validate all the ideas and to to, to see what uh, like what we are proposing is actually working, we needed to have some solution. And we come up with uh, some intermediate step. And this intermediate step is CRI resource manager. Uh, it works as a normal container runtime. So Kublet sees it as a like, container, DO, cryo, what, whatever. Uh, it's absolutely transparent uh, to, towards the Kublet. Uh, it doesn't reinvent the wheel. So in the backend, it still uses container, DO, cryo, whatever you prefer to use. But what it does, uh, it allows you to have a dedicated set of policies on how you are uh, managing the resources. So we have both uh, policies related to hardware. So like all the scenarios, what Marlo just mentioned, like limit of NUMA nodes or memory tiering different setups, uh, all of these things we tried, we know how to work with it. So like we have tests with like huge machines, like 32 circuits and, and so on. Um, uh, we had uh, scenarios with different memory tiers, like high bandwidth memory, uh, PMM, CXL memory, which is upcoming in the hardware and so on. Uh, we also tried to look uh, from a perspective of not only hardware, but also application. So for example, if you have a set of containers which needs to work together, let's say like your application plus service mesh container, you don't want to, like when the data is passed between those two containers, you don't really want to them to cross uh, like L3 cache the, the domain zones or well, even worse, like memory domain zones and so on. Uh, we support container affinity and anti-affinity. So for example, like your database should not be affected by um, like CPU consumption of uh, backup container or, or something similar. So we provide to to the user a set uh, of knobs how to get out of of a node, and that's actually what, what, like the main difference between like what uh, team what where Marvel is working and uh, my particular team. My team we are focusing specifically what happening within the node. Like all the details, all the deep knowledge of the hardware, all, all, all combinations of how it's, it's going to work. So, uh, oops, where is it? So as I, as I mentioned, right now it's implemented uh, as a like kind of proxy between the kubelet and, con uh, and actual container runtime. But we are working together with um, uh, container game project and cryo project to implement a thing which is called NRI, node resource interface. It's also plugin interface similar to what uh, Kubernetes community is now thinking of implementing, uh, but it's a bit more detailed. Uh, uh, the reason for it is what we need to understand the border where each layer of the Kubernetes stack contains enough information of doing a proper decision. So right now, the uh, communication between the Kubelet and runtime is kind of imperative. So Kubelet dictates how certain things needs to be implemented, like the CPU set, a uh, uh, bunch of other things, or like transforming the set of quotas and so on. The problem with that is what, uh, it was okay five years ago when we had only run C as a runtime. 
the current set of runtimes. We have VM-based runtimes like Kata. We have user leap based runtimes like GVisor and, and ours. So all the assumptions what Kublet has about how the container is run is not necessarily appropriate uh, or not, not necessarily the true. So some of information available only on the runtime. So this things what uh, my team is trying to do, we are trying to make sure what certain information properly passes between the Kublet and runtimes and when utilizing uh, how it's done. And besides the CPU, we have several other activities like NRI I already mentioned, uh, but when we have a uh, few things which is related to uh, class-based resources or quality of service kind of resources, so it's cache, it's memory bandwidth, it's block IO. Uh, well, to some degree, uh, memory tiering can be represented as quality of service uh, scenarios and so on. And another thing is device manager. So like what uh, Marlo just mentioned about the GPU scheduling, it's good. It's, it's a way how to utilize uh, GPU based on current device plugin API. But the problem is what uh, with current device plugin APIs contains a lot of, uh, I wouldn't say design mistakes, but in, inefficiencies uh, if we are looking from a current hardware state of view. So like it worked well if you have single uh, exclusive use of the hardware without any knowledge about internal resources no shared usage and, and so on but as soon as we start to thinking like okay let's have one physical gpu or some other accelerator device to be shared let's think about the memory on it let's think about the internal topology of those accelerators and so on and so forth those simply didn't work. Like there are different workarounds and what we implemented with GPU device plugin for Intel accelerators, it's also a set of workarounds. Uh, NVIDIA have their own, uh, Google for NVIDIA GPUs, we have their own, but it's all not really extendable. So what we are working together with NVIDIA and recently we also have uh, people from other uh, projects joining so like, like one notable is Acre, uh, like IoT kind of devices, network attached devices. Uh, we have those two initiatives, like one is CDI, container device interface. It's again on the runtime level, how we attaching the container to the device. No, sorry, how, how we attaching device to the container. All the nifty details, how, how it should be done on a uh, low level. But when the upper part, um, like the Kublet part is dynamic resource allocation. So this is revisiting how we how the user can uh, request the device. So going from the previous model of let's use the extended resources and then try to have like all kind of combination of those resources and when GPU scheduler extensions and so on, uh, we are coming to interface similar to persistent volume claims. So you, you request the device of particular class, you specify a set of parameters uh, to, to this device. When device driver, like the vendor specific code will be able to understand what those parameters about, how to get it properly allocated, and when hint to the scheduler where it will be allocatable. So like full flexibility for vendors to provide like vendor logic specific to particular device, or actually even chain of the devices. So this is like set of puzzles what Intel in overall working uh, across multiple teams uh, in the resource management domain. Like from scheduler, uh, existing Kublet things, low level runtimes and well, combinations of it. I think I will stop this web. Uh, if there are additional questions, I can pull out some of the slides or some of the details. Cool, thank you. Um, I don't know if anyone else has any questions. So I, I'm curious how the folks in the in the traditional uh, research drive management scheduler community would 
interface with something like this. So if you had somebody from the Altair or the SketchMD community that wanted to um, pass back to the scheduler to make some, you know, to give it information about what components of a node, um, what resources on the node it should have. Uh, is, is there some, is there something in what you're, you're proposing here that they would, they would be using or that's a kind of an entirely separate, uh, separate step? So there are several things how we can tackle it. So right now the Kublet is discovering uh, the resources and when doing the assumptions about how, how those resources are uh, present on the node. It's not necessarily much as what uh, actually runtime has uh, and can runtime can use. Uh, but that's one, one side of the story. I, I will come back to it. The second part of the resources is uh, extendable resources. And here we have two uh, variants how it can be uh, announced to the, uh, like to the scheduler. Like one is uh, device plugins. So device plugin says, I have this amount of instances of particular resource type. Uh, second variant is what uh, you can um, patch the node object and say what this node object has this amount of this resource allocatable. And when Kublet will do a simple accounting, like we, how many ports are using this particular resource. Uh, to help with that, we have NFD. So like our GPU device plugin is working together with NFD to actually uh, automate this uh, announcing of those uh, resources. So like for example, like this uh, Mili CPU or, or Mili GPU parts of, of, uh, of a GPU or uh, like a GPU memory is handled by, by an FD um, plugin. But as I mentioned, it's most of it is like workarounds for, for current design of device plugins API, so current design of uh, uh, extendable resources. Uh, with things what I mentioned, uh, like this uh, dynamic resource allocation, uh, it, it has similar setup uh, like the storage drivers. So you have a cluster level components which works together with a uh, scheduler and you have a node component which is responsible to actually attach the device uh, to a container and work together with runtimes to, to do it. So it, it, it will be the part of this cluster level component to, to, to talk with the scheduler to make sure what the resources are available and can be consumed for, uh, for the pod and provide the topology information on which nodes uh, these resources will be available. Um, regarding the Kublet runtime part, uh, it's long, long way to actually get there, but uh, what we eventually need to do is what we need to remove this discrepancy between the kublet knowledge and runtime knowledge. So it means what at some point we need to revisit the protocol how the kublet and the runtime are talking about the resources. So right now in uh, this class-based QoS resources, what we have, uh, we have a, a CRI messages where runtime talk, uh, tells to the kublet uh, which quality of service classes uh, available and what, like what types of QoS classes available and what is the potential values are available. So the node, the kublet can report it into the node status and then the scheduler can consume it to make a scheduling decision. So it, it's similar model what we have right now for the native resources, the only difference is what Kublet not discovering it, uh, Kublet gets it from, from the runtime. So if we are talking about uh, resource management plugins, like regardless, regardless on which level, on Kublet or on runtime, sooner or later we will need to have exactly the same interface. So Kublet, uh, oh, sorry, plugin should be able to tell to runtime or to Kublet uh, what kind of additional resources it might be available so it can be used in the uh, scheduling decision and well, obviously and, node status. And that's part of the work is figuring out how to have dynamic resources as part of this, right? So they do need to be advertised to the scheduler. 
but some of that work is figuring out how. Yeah, the biggest problem with all of those how is what uh, we have a lot of legacy code and we have a lot of users who are relying on this legacy. So to change something where we need to be very careful how, how to not to break the things. Uh, previously, it was a huge roadblock in, in terms of Docker shim because, well, <laughs> You, you still needed to to take care of uh, like Docker API, which was quite simple. Now, when uh, when Docker shim is removed, we have a bit more freedom, like how we can evolve the CRI protocol. Awesome, thank you. Um, don't know if there's any time for one more quick question, if there is one. Otherwise, I think that's probably us. Good time, actually, 5-2. So thank you very much, Marlo and, and Sasha, for coming along. Uh, I think a couple of people have to drop, so sorry about that. But we've got it all recorded, and we'll share it. So thank you very much for your time. It's really, really good stuff. Yeah, uh, and I can send out the slides after. Sasha, if you want to add to mine before I, I send, I'll send to you. I just sent in the chat a link to a session of what we had in uh, Batch and HPC day. So, like the slides, what I showed, it's attached where, and I think recording is also should be available from awesome. the same thing. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, and any slides, just just chuck them into the um, into the Slack channel. All right, that sounds great. Thank you. Brilliant. Okay, well, thanks very much. Um, so yeah, that's probably it for today. Our next session is going to be actually sixth of July. I think it was in the agenda previously. It was down as the 29th of. Uh, June, but it won't be then because we've already done two sessions in June. So, yeah, 6th of July will be the next time. And we're going to do uh, have a session, I think, on Cilium and eBPF. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you again, uh, Sasha Marlow, and uh, see you all next time. Thank Cheers you. Guys. Thank you. Bye bye.